at five. She called him her boyfriend and said he made her melt. Those are comments we've just learned Jennifer Victor made about an eighth grader. When you take a young developing brain and you overstimulate it. Just the latest in a string of cases beginning most famously with Mary Kay Letourneau and her young lover, her sixth grade student. A jury convicted 31-year-old Ethel Anderson of nine counts of molesting a 12-year-old boy. According to an arrest affidavit, Hodges picked up a 14-year-old student at his home. It's all happened sometime early in June. The two then allegedly went back to Hodges' apartment where they smoked marijuana and had sex. All right, this is disgusting. Police near Boston say a teacher jumped in the sack with a boy and did it, literally, more than 300 times. And she's married. Both involving a scenario that seems to be occurring more often in school. Female teachers sexually molesting, and that's what it is, young boys. 22-year-old Kaylee Warnick is charged with aggravated criminal sexual contact and endangering the welfare of a child. Well, a band teacher could lose her job after she was arrested for allegedly having a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old male student. Now, this teacher is a wife and mother, and she's pregnant with her second child, but she was led into court in handcuffs, and now she faces serious charges. Bridget, do you have anything to say? Former school security guard faced a Norfolk judge this morning. 23-year-old Patience Perez is accused of having sex with a student. After investigating, police say they believe she did have a sexual relationship with the teen several months ago. She was arrested on charges of unlawful sexual intercourse with the minor. Stephanie Draper accused of having sex with a 14-year-old on four occasions. A middle school teacher charged with sexually assaulting a 14-year-old boy. A woman is accused of having sex with a 15-year-old she met while working at an area church. Now she's in even more trouble and under arrest again. She went by and she picked up the vodka as well as some Sprite and then she picked up the student. They went to the park where they began fooling around basically after hours. An officer noticed a car on the end of the park and decided to go check it out. And When the officer walked up to the car with her flashlight, that's when she noticed that both of the people in the car were nude and that the teacher was involved. The student basically lied about his age right off the bat. With regard to count one, Sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. With regard to count two, Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. I thought the, I thought it was still one to five, but you're correct. It's the months. Sorry. Go ahead. With regard to count two, sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. With regard to count three, sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. With regard to count four offenses involving underage persons furnishing alcohol to underage persons, you're sentenced to 30 days. With regard to count five sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. With regard to count six sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. With regard to count seven offenses involving underage persons, you're sentenced to 30 days. With regard to count eight, sexual battery, you're sentenced to 12 months. All of those eight counts will run concurrent with each other at the same time. So that's an accumulation at this time of 12 months. With regard to count nine, this is when the individuals changed. We go from the first two individuals now, count nine, to the uh, different individuals. With regard to count nine, 12 months. With regard to count 10, sexual battery, 12 months. With regard to count 11, sexual battery, 12 months. Counts 9, 10, and 11 will run concurrent with each other, but consecutive to counts 1 through 8. With regard to count 12, sexual battery, 12 months. With regard to count 13, sexual battery, 12 months. With regard to count 16, sexual battery, 12 months. With regard to count 15, sexual battery, 12 months. Yeah, yeah, I know. Why am I paying attention to cable news talk shows and ridiculous local news broadcasts, which will hype anything to get ratings, right?
It's interesting, despite the barrage of reporting, you can find some pretty confident statements out there that adult female sex offenders are not on the rise recently, and that there has been the same number or percentage lurking out there among us basically forever. And this notion seems to jibe with medical observations made a hundred years or more ago. Sadly, however, rather than being appalled by this alleged centuries-long stupor of selective awareness, outrage, and enforcement when it comes to sex crimes committed by one gender, but not those perpetrated by the other, there's an equal amount of confidence that this bigoted behavior was and is justified. In nearly the same breath, these same people will admit sex offenses by women have all but gone unnoticed by law enforcement until recently and then tell you with a straight face that prosecutions are on the rise, but the corresponding official statistics somehow magically are not. Sorry, but she can't have it both ways. It doesn't work that way. Fact of the matter is, thanks to society's acute intolerance of, and laser focus on, the sexual transgressions of men, while simultaneously granting criminal carte blanche to women in this area, None of us has the slightest, let alone a keen awareness, of what the percentages and rates of change are from year to year or decade to decade. And some studies have been done that indicate our mass ignorance on this subject is not only worse than that, but downright abject and abysmal. Shrugging your shoulders because you think repugnant behavior plateaued ages ago and trudged along at some static rate ever since not only seems like a rather morally bankrupt reaction, to me at least, but it also appears to be at odds with the few accurate numbers we do have with regards to female offenders. Sure, we're seeing the specter of the pointless and ridiculous war on drugs here with these skyrocketing prison numbers, but it's pretty obvious that the rate of female sexual assaults could not have flatlined for the past 30 or 40 years at 3%, as suggested in the Slate article. And while I'm not aware of an extensive and accurate national survey in the U.S. of female sex offenders, numbers from individual states for both men and women, and law enforcement observations made in other countries, do a fairly convincing job of refuting the notion that rates have remained constant. Admittedly, these increases don't tell us whether or not law enforcement simply decided within the past few decades to begin paying attention to an existing and significant but mostly hidden problem, or if the problem itself grew in magnitude during that time. But given our strange dedication to planting our collective cranium and our collective posterior when it comes to sex crimes committed by women, would it be completely crazy to suggest that both things are happening simultaneously? That the possibility that it may have been going on forever doesn't automatically turn sensational local news broadcasts into pointless hype. I mean, is it completely absurd to suggest they're not mutually exclusive? Even if there were good reason for all the unsubstantiated confidence, or arrogant bluster if you want to call it that, about official statistics exactly reflecting what is unfortunately and without a doubt, if we're going to be honest about it anyway, a total mystery to all of us, and people like me who say where there's smoke, there's fire, are horribly mistaken, it's pretty obvious that women who rape young boys are becoming more desperate and brazen about it, if nothing else. And so is the despicable, sexist excuse-making for these predators. If it's true that women have always done this at some static rate without being caught, do we need to search any further for a reason why they get away with it? A legitimate international news publication is calling for child rape and molestation to be ignored based on the genders of the perpetrator and victims, and because boys, not girls, I guess, are asking for it. This victim blaming on the part of a thoroughly confused Guardian columnist would just be bizarre if this opinion weren't so deplorable, disturbing, and widespread. I mean, even the NFL caves to pressure calling for sole focus on punishing its male athletes for behavior with other adults, while its cheerleaders, women you would assume typify Western ideals of sex appeal and beauty and therefore can get just about any adult male they want, and any number of them besides, are busy preying on children. 
Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. This is a pretty big story around here, and it's making national headlines, too. You see, Sarah Jones, not only was she an NFL cheerleader, but she was also a popular school teacher. She taught English at a local high school here in Kentucky. Well, prosecutors here say while there, she was actually having sex with one of her students, a teenage boy. This morning, Sarah Jones is opening up for the first time in an exclusive interview. Now, right now, she's under house arrest, so we had to go to her. Is, um, I have an ankle bracelet that I have to wear, so I have to keep this on, with, um, on me at all times. And I'm not even allowed to, I can't walk to the mailbox. If I, get, if I go to the mailbox, it will start beeping. You get a get a, it's called a violation. Ms. Shattuck, may we speak to you? Former Baltimore Ravens cheerleader Molly Shattuck is facing rape charges, unlawful sexual contact, and providing alcohol to a minor for allegedly having sex with a 15-year-old boy at a beach house in Delaware Labor Day weekend. Shatuck is recently divorced and well known in some circles, having published a book entitled Vibrant Living, promoting a healthy lifestyle. Allegedly, she contacted her victim through her own son. She has pleaded not guilty. She's just a classic example. She is no different than an abusing priest, an abusing rabbi, or a parent. You almost get the feeling that the more the problem of female offenders becomes apparent and intensifies, the more some people, especially feminists, want to tighten the stranglehold on men to cover it up. So if you ask me, despite the best efforts of the usual man-hating suspects, I think we're finally witnessing the double standard of women getting away with crimes for which men were crucified for centuries, dying a slow, fitful death. Thanks in part to a recent uptick in female sexual offenses and an increased awareness that it's not just men who molest and rape. So why the recent uptick? You could probably think of many explanations just off the top of your head for how and why society has changed in ways that would allow it to accommodate more female sex offenders, if that is in fact what's going on here. A few that come to mind for me are that they have been liberated en masse from traditional gender roles and the accompanying scrutiny of spouses and family members and therefore have more free time and independence to do as they like and pursue a greater number and variety of sexual partners, whether those partners are capable of giving consent or not. And they constitute a larger portion of the labor force and therefore one would assume have more financial means to accomplish such goals, if you want to call them that. But none of that, assuming you agree with it, would necessarily explain why more women choose to prey on children these days why they are making the personal choice to commit these criminal acts in greater numbers if, again, this is indeed the reality behind all the media hype as I believe it to be the case. And make no mistake, if men have only themselves to blame for sex crimes that they commit, then so do women. I think it's obvious by now that I'm no fan of feminism, or at least the version normally shoved down our throats that women are always the victims regardless of circumstances. But while it could very well be playing a part, even I would not make the case that feminism and all the changes it has brought about in society are wholly responsible here. I think I've got a much simpler explanation. I'm here to explain to you this phenomenon called MGTOW, which stands for Men Going Their Own Way. An introduction video for MGTOW. In the MGTOW phenomenon movement, whatever we call it, diaspora, the man strike, the marriage strike, the sexodus, Peter Pan syndrome, failure to launch, the grass eater phenomena. There are lots of names for it. MGTOW in the manosphere. So I was MGTOW for years and years uh, without uh, even knowing it. I wanted to make a video effectively outlining my journey to MGTOW. Why I respect MGTOW. She is proof that MGTOW is the only rational option men have. And this is going to be another video about the MGTOW people, or MGTOW as I like to say, um, they blame everything or most of everything bad in Western culture and society on quote unquote feminism or feminists. Comments from MGTOW gentlemen on YouTube who claim that they are not about misogyny. At least half the MGTOWs are guys who couldn't get laid. <laughs> And no, it's not Japanese. Ming Tao! You're the best one who killed my master. I have no idea who your master is. My master was Ming Tao. Ming Tao! Now, I kill you. Hoo-yah!
Thirty-six <laughs> percent of males aged sixteen to nineteen have no interest in or even despised despise sex, and that's a nineteen percent increase since two thousand eight. So in Japan right now, you're seeing this huge change in you know the thought process of the males there, right? Because they're tired of trying. You can see the drop on this chart. The Pew Research Center analyzing the data shows that the marriage rate at 50% last year. It peaked in 1960 at 72%, but it's been dropping since then and is now at a 93-year low. It turns out that, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, the percentage of men ages 20 to 34 who are not married is actually over 70% now. Why are there so many... Uh, I guess non-white MGTOW, like black MGTOW, Hispanic MGTOW, you know, Middle Eastern MGTOW, what have you. And even some of, uh, you know, like Eastern European cats and shit like that. People, particularly women, are becoming more and more aware that men don't want to get married because of the numerous disadvantages that men uh, suffer when they are married. Men are opting out of marriage. They're in some situations opting out of the, the ladder of career. They're opting out of normal, what we would think of as normal romantic relationships. Some MGTOW guys are uh, actually taking significant steps to just not deal with women at all. Like, at all. I won't work with women. I won't buy stuff in a store with female employees. I won't socialize with women, etc., etc. I mean, some guys go a long way. But at the core of it is no marriage, right? The most fundamental and emblematic of gynocentric institutions is marriage. When you go to divorce court as a man and you get fucked in the ass by lawyers and judges, if you're going through divorce court and you're losing everything, is anybody ever going to think to themselves, boy, this is a bit easier because I'm Chinese or because I'm Arabic or because I'm black or because I'm white? If you have friends that have been divorced, guess what? Chances are, if they said, I'm never getting married again, boom, they're a MGTOW. They just don't know it yet. Send them this video. Um, I don't know what to make of it, actually. I think, uh, you know, I, I was married. I, I'm divorced. What about the children? Who's going to raise the children? Without men, how are we going to raise the children? Without their incomes, how are we going to raise the children? I see some white guys just fucking losing their shit. And again, I'm not picking on you guys. It's just, I'm just trying to say it the way it is. Y'all ain't used to being treated like niggas. To not be the walking meat sack automatons that the feminists and females of the world want you to be. Okay, you got me. Has feminism played a role in the MGTOW phenomenon? Almost undoubtedly. But not a direct or leading role, at least I don't think anyway. Because while we may agree that feminists can and do benefit from division and animosity between genders, their first priority has always been self-aggrandizement through establishing permanent victim status for women. Men opting out of their traditional roles and participation of any kind in what we think of as normal romantic relationships between the sexes is really just an unintended and organic reaction cropping up among separate individuals and groups of men without any larger planning or activism whatsoever. Poof, it kind of just happened, and I don't think it's going over so well with the rest of society. Think what I'm proposing is total vacuous crap? Then let me ask you this. Do you really believe completely disturbed, narcissistic personalities like these were going to put up with not being fawned over for very long? Just look at the troubling behavior on display here when sentencing for some of the worst crimes humans can perpetrate, crimes against children now, is being levied upon them. There's not a shred of remorse or regret, and the only thing they care about is the attention and being in the spotlight, and they are going to relish every last drop of it, whatever form it takes and wherever it comes from. Do you really think these self-absorbed psychopaths were going to simply do nothing while their hormonal urges raged away inside them and their biological clocks ticked down to zero, with no men showing up to stumble over themselves and compete to satisfy them? Do you really think these women were going to let nothing happen? Or do you instead think they were going to do whatever it takes to find naive males who know no better, 
when it comes to the rather daunting legal implications of their childbearing urges and the unforgiving rulings of the courts these days with regards to parenthood, financial support, and custody of children. And what kind of males lack the common sense and knowledge about such laws and societal priorities but are physically ready to engage in the act? Young men and boys. And this doesn't necessarily mean that these women had to be totally aware of, consciously acting upon, or vocal about their repressed desires at every stage and every moment here. It may have surfaced in far simpler, more innocent ways, such as frustration with adult men, men who know how to make responsible choices for themselves, insisting upon condoms. And they may even have had rather strongly maintained that they wanted no children before they engaged in these acts or terminated any resulting pregnancies. This is biology we're talking about here, people. And it's a stronger force for some of us than we realize or like to admit. Because this story is about Olita's 14-year-old son, Ricardo. Welcome, Ricardo, to the show. Now, Olita and Ricardo are here because a 20-year-old woman named Quintero <laughs> is claiming that 14-year-old Ricardo is the father of her one-month-old daughter, Peyton. Well, a band teacher could lose her job after she was arrested for allegedly having a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old male student. Now, this teacher is a wife and mother, and she's pregnant. Police say the teen's mother tipped off cops after finding text messages from the teacher. Later, she helped police by recording a phone conversation where police say Fitchter admitted falling in love, getting pregnant by the 17-year-old. You're 30 years old. You need to get real. She had his baby on purpose. You're a pedophile. You've ruined my stepson's life. Police say she's admitted she likes 15-year-old boys more than guys her own age, although she didn't give a reason why when questioned by officers. According to police, Hernandez met a 13-year-old boy at Desert Sky Mall in Phoenix late last year. A few days later, told him on Facebook that she was 14 years old going on 15. A few days after that, according to police, the two had sex. In February, that boy's mother contacted police, saying she had discovered Hernandez's real age. The mother claims Hernandez gave her son an STD and admitted to it when confronted. During that confrontation, police say Hernandez also told the boy's mother she was pregnant. A 29-year-old teacher in Michigan has been arrested for having sexual relations with her 15-year-old student. This is Catherine Ronk. Take this case, for example. It just so happens to be one of the rare occasions where the judge came down hard on a woman with a long, harsh sentence usually given to men. I don't know it for a fact, but I would guess that Catherine Ronk and her husband have been married for several years and have no children, or at least not as many as she wants. I would also be willing to bet just about everything I own if there were a reliable and impartial way to reach the determination here that that's why she strayed. And that's why she chose to do so with young men whose mindless and reckless lust for lovemaking she interpreted as unrestrained devotion to her own needs and to satisfying them. So sorry for, to the victim and the victim's family. I'm sorry to the school, the school community, and my, my family, my parents, the embarrassment, the pain. I'm so sorry to my husband. I, I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry. A 15 is 15. A sophomore in high school is a sophomore in high school. I mean, they're barely figuring out still how to make their way in the world. That's why they're in high school. Ah, uh, you feel really bad for her, right? Here, let me see if I can help you recognize a child rapist when you see one. Funny how that double standard thing works, huh? You can take it to the bank that had one of these boys impregnated her. She would have told her husband it was his child. And if the Ronks do in fact have children together, I recommend her husband drop $25 or so on a DNA test kit to find out if he's really the father. And that goes for any other man who has been told by these predators that he's the father. That's outrageous and terrible though, right? What about the poor children, right? Who's going to support them? Once again, it's funny how when men worry about their paternity, it's a problem. 
But when women go shopping for paternity wherever they can find a good deal, this behavior is somehow magically not a problem. Just imagine a man coming home with his little bundle of Jon Snow joy and telling his wife she's a mother now. Her inner Caitlin Stark would unleash every last ounce of her fury on him. The outrage is always pointed at men, and women can never do any wrong. I get the sense that while women were busy treating traditional gender roles like a salad bar, where they could pick and choose the ones they liked while discarding those they didn't, that they expected men to just be happy with their choices and not make their own selections. And some women definitely seem to think men shouldn't even be allowed into the buffet line. So the question you need to ask yourself is, do you care that boys are being seduced and raped? And that's exactly what it is. It's rape because they have no means to give meaningful consent in these situations. They're only children. And in most of these situations, or many of them, they are drugged anyway. Do you care that simply because adult men are electing more and more these days to do what's best for them and to protect themselves and their own interests, more boys are being raped as a result? Do you care? I would bet, based on rather irrational and shocking attitudes out there, that women never do anything wrong, even when they take advantage of children in some of the most morally bankrupt ways, that most of you unfortunately do not. If the despicable nature of these crimes still hasn't dawned on you, just consider for a moment how these women and their lawyers will stop at nothing to avoid a guilty verdict, including attempting to pass the blame onto the children in the situation. To hear the former Coleraine High School teacher tell it on her terms, the students came on to her, not the other way around. And just to let you know, this trial does deal with adult subject matter. Today, Julie houtzen Roter, the woman accused of having sex with two 16-year-old boys, took the stand to defend herself. But first, from Fox at 3 o'clock in New York, lawyers for an accused teacher, or I should say, a teacher accused of having sex with her students, those lawyers say that the students were actually taking advantage of her. Defense attorneys claim she's mentally ill with multiple personalities and that the boys knew their teacher was, quote, vulnerable and impaired. How do you attempt something so reprehensible and still be allowed to practice law and not be disbarred in your state? That's what I want to know. Do you care now? Does having more, quote, fathers, unquote, in their teens or younger even than that still seem like a good idea to you? Or did you fail to even think it through that far? If your opinion is similar to what seems to be the majority held one out there, chances are pretty good you didn't think it through that far. Do you care that men and even teenage boys get harsher sentences for being stupid enough to arrange sexual encounters with law enforcement posing as young girls that don't exist, or initially posing as adult females in order to dupe them into doing the same thing, than women do when they ply actual boys that really do exist with genuine drugs and alcohol and then have non-consensual sex with them for real. You think you know how these things go down. Cops post an ad for an underage teen, wait for predators to respond, then arrest them when they show up in person. If I had Grady's World, they'd all go to prison. But what so many of our local law enforcement leaders are not telling you is that they've had to try harder and harder over the years to trick men into showing up. Ten Investigates has learned through court documents and arrest reports that law enforcement is now reaching out themselves to young men who did nothing more than post an ad on a traditional dating site. Cops form a rapport, then switch their age, and try to trick the sometimes hesitant men to keep on talking. Ten Investigates agreed to conceal the identity of this local mother whose son was targeted in a predator roundup. He was 22 when he responded to an ad of a 26-year-old woman, but she drew him in, then switched her age to 13. He didn't believe her and took her up on the offer to meet. He was arrested, and now he'll forever be known as a sexual offender. He had a life of promise. He had an education. Coming up tomorrow night in part two of our investigation, we'll show you how most of the men facing a lifetime of discipline and shame aren't the middle-aged predators law enforcement wants you to believe. They're young men, many of them teenagers, who are simply trying to meet women their own age. A male of just about any age commits what is mostly a thought crime and only motivates himself to the threshold of committing a tangible act, a tangible crime, 
and therefore does nothing close to what women do for real, and yet he is treated far worse in the justice system. Does that matter to you at all? Probably not. Adult men who have the logical capacity and incentive to do a cost-benefit analysis of relationships, marriage, and procreation, and what they have come to mean, as they see it anyway, in a modern world, are choosing more and more to abandon these institutions altogether. And they have every right to do so. They would have every right to do so even if the conclusions they've been reaching were completely misguided, rash, and irresponsible, which I personally don't think is the case. Adults are free to live their lives in any legal way they choose, even in ways that others view as counterproductive. Male children, boys, on the other hand, do not comprehend the social repercussions of their sexual urges, or if they do, they do so fleetingly or to a minimal extent. They are mostly unaware, recklessly eager, and therefore vulnerable, and yet, society still holds them more responsible for their biological instincts and actions than it does adult women. They are also, therefore, the perfect victims, because everyone sees them in exactly the opposite way, and these female predators and their lawyers try to use this disgraceful inequity to their full advantage. Being impulsive and aggressive as a boy tends to be interpreted as mindful intent even when it is coaxed to the surface by drugs and alcohol and provoked by mature feminine wiles that have been snubbed and frustrated at almost every turn pretty much everywhere else. And despite the fact that the necessary development for any sort of sophisticated awareness or purposeful thought would be lacking in even a sober immature mind. If you were looking for a way to rephrase this entire long-winded video in a word or two, it would be rape culture. That's right. Rape culture. The predation is pervasive, the victims are shamed and blamed, the impacts are trivialized, and the perpetrators are given a slap on the wrist if they are even pursued by law enforcement at all. And it's all due to intolerance and discrimination based on social attitudes regarding gender and sexuality. It satisfies every aspect of the term's definition that feminists have developed and pushed on us ever since that development. It's just not the kind of rape culture these self-interested women choose to emphasize. Shocking, I know. If you don't think so, let me ask you this one simple question. Have you ever seen an outpouring of support for a convicted male child rapist without one person sympathizing with the victim? And failing all that, do you ever at any point in your life want to appear this clueless about an adult abusing a child? Now, she is facing a number of charges, uh, including first-degree sexual conduct, one count of possession of sexually abusive material featuring a child, and also one count of furnishing alcohol to a minor. Mm -hmm. Now, so here's the issue. She's hot, okay? And uh, so I'm going to get in trouble here. Now, so here's the issue. She's hot, okay? And uh, so I'm going to get in trouble here. Now, so here's the issue. She's hot, okay? And uh, so I'm gonna get in trouble here. I'm gonna ask you guys what I'm supposed to do about this. Yes, I have a double standard. I denounce and reject myself for all of that. She looks so young. She's, they say she's 29. She looks, I mean, 24 at most to me. Getting laid! She seems to have alcohol in a lot of the pictures. She's hot. Honestly, if I had had sex with her when I was 15, I would have declared that the best day of my life and it probably would not have been matched since. You're not getting laid! I denounce and reject myself for all of that. You're right! If it was a 15, if it was my 15 year old dude, daughter having sex with a 29 year old attractive teacher, yes, I have a double standard. There's this quirk here that I cannot solve. She's hot. Getting laid! Cenk, you're my hero.